How to configure color changing LED buttons for your arcade machine. I've been waiting about a month to make this video, and it's part two of my video on how to wire an arcade control panel with color changing RGB LED buttons. That's a mouthful, so I'd rather show you what I'm talking about. Here I have a control panel with LED buttons that change color, i.e. the RGB LED buttons. And depending on which game I select into, the control panel will reconfigure itself to match that game. Here's what it looks like for the Konami X-Men 4 player game. Or the Ninja Turtle game of the same type. And here's NBA Jam. So if you haven't watched already and you're curious what it takes to wire one of these, check out my other video. In this video I'm going to show you how to download RGB Commander for use with RetroPie. And then at a very basic level I'll show you how to configure it. In my next video I'll talk about tips and tricks and get very detailed on how I program this thing. But I figured it'd be better to split this up into two videos. So let's get started. I have a Raspberry Pi 4 running Raspbian and RetroPie over that. And I'm using the Ultimark Ultimate I.O. board to control the LEDs. The RGB Commander software can interface with many different kinds of boards. If you're following along and you don't have RetroPie installed, check out my previous video on how to do that. Otherwise, the first step is to go to the RGB Commander website. So in this setup, I can just open a web browser and download the files directly to the system. Otherwise, I would have to download the files and then transfer them over. So here I typed in RGB Commander into the search bar and it's the first result. He has a download button and then at the bottom of my screen you can see the progress. And so it opens up and I want to take all of these files and dump it into this folder. Home, Pi, RetroPi, and then I made a folder called RGB Commander and I put the files in there. Now the steps for installing it really aren't that complicated. The complication happens in how you're going to configure the thing and make sure that it sees your board that you're trying to connect to it. I opened up a terminal window by clicking that little black box up on the upper left hand corner. If you don't have Raspbian or you're using a different version of RetroPie then you'll want to exit out of the RetroPie interface by either selecting F4 or pushing the start button and navigating to quit emulation station. You'll want to type the following commands into the command prompt. So the first command after I copy those files over is to enter into that directory. So I'm going to go CD, Home, Pi, Retro Pi, RGB Commander. And then once I'm in that directory, I'll run this command. So apparently what that did is it made my setup.sh file unexecutable. There's no result in the screen that tells you that this worked. I think I could right click on the file and then see that it's an executable now. So after that you run this command to install the script. So those are the steps for installing the RGB Commander software. At this point, you should have everything installed. The last command listed on the screen opens up your XML file, which is where you'll have all your configurations with the text editor. If you're copying this command off of the RGB Commander website, it's missing a B and it won't work out for you. So the folder user sbin RGB Commander is going to be the one that has your RGB Command XML file that you'll need to edit and also your log file that you'll use to see if the software is working correctly. Instead of using the Pico text editor from the command prompt, I'm going to use a text editor called Genie. I like Genie because I'm able to do a text search, the colors are displayed different, it's easier to use. The only sticking point is you have to make sure that you open the file in edit mode rather than just view only, which I think seems to be the default. I reopen my file window, I tree up a couple of times, and go into that folder I was telling you about earlier, user sbin rgb commander, and to have my xml file in there. It would be wise to create a copy of this file, so if you ever need to go back to the original revision, you can. The xml file has a lot of instructions and explanations in there, and it's pretty well put together. I mentioned before that I'm going to get really detailed in how to edit this xml file in the next video. In this video, I'm just going to go through the changes that I made and how I got it to work with this system. To edit the XML file, I'm going to hit the Raspberry icon, go to Programming, and I'm going to open this program called Genie, which is really just a text editor. Let me do a quick aside. For some reason, if I have my Ultimate I.O., a mouse, keyboard, and a controller hooked up, then the keyboard and mouse won't work properly. If I undo my Ultimate I.O. LED board, 
then things seem to work okay. This isn't a really big deal because each time I edit the XML file, I need to restart the system to have the changes effective. So if you're gonna go the route of using the Genie text editor, you'll need to make sure that you're in edit mode. Sometimes if you just go file open, it puts you into view mode. To go to edit mode, right click on the file and then say open with Genie. All right, so in my original RGB command XML file, there's a lot of instructions at the very top, and I ended up removing these in my own file. I'll have a copy of my file for download so you can compare it to the new one. So scrolling all the way down to the required colors, you don't want to edit these just as the XML file says. This hardware configuration section is the first part that you'll probably need to edit. In the original document, you see it's set up for a PAC64 LED. So now I'm going to click over into my modified document. Scroll down past the colors section. And over at the LED board name, you can see I have ultimate IO underscore one. At the very top of this document, they have a port number 2724 and some other configurations. I didn't end up changing any of that. I did fool around with the hardware throttle setting a little bit, and I'm not really sure if I got very far on that or what happened. It seems to be working okay, so I kind of leave it alone. Now here's an important part that kind of stumped me. You have to name each one of your buttons and tell it what pin that corresponds to. Right here I saved an old configuration that I had where I didn't do it correctly. I mentioned before that this video was going to be pretty basic explanation, so let me try to do it as quick as I can. On my LED board, to control the lights, I have pins 1 through 96. Each of these pins gets connected to a wire. And that wire is going to go to the LED to control the portion that displays either red, blue, or green, or a combination of those. Which is why they're called RGB LEDs. And scrolling down, the reason I had to revise this setup is because the pins on the right hand side were backwards. At the top of the screen, you can see that I said P4 coin is 94, 95, 96, and then on the bottom, it says 96, 95, 94. It's only this way in the Ultimate I.O. board, and in the XML file, the author actually mentions this. Another important point is that each button to its pin correspondence has to have a unique name. So for instance, if you accidentally name it P3 button 3 twice, I think the program errors out. What I'm going to do now is hit Control F for find, and then I'm going to search for my ROM name, TMNTU, which is the Ninja Turtles American version. And here I am popped into that configuration. I'm calling out the same button names that I made above, and I'm giving them a color that was defined at the beginning of this XML document. This video game has uh, two buttons for each controller, so you can see a lot of them are going to be set to off. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more in this configuration file. There's a whole lot of pre-configured games in here. However, they won't work for my setup and they'll need to be manually edited in order to display the right color LED. If you open up one of these ROMs and it didn't have a configuration, it would revert to the default configuration. And if you didn't specify your defaults correctly, it would display a whole bunch of different colors. But you could still play the game. Let me show you what the log file looks like. So under that same user sbin folder, here's the log file. And it's pretty useful to let you know whether or not this thing connected up, sees your board, and in my case I didn't enter any games right here. But if I did, it would display that it was a success. Here's a video of the end result. When I go in and out of a game where I have a configuration set, it'll highlight the buttons that are being used and change their colors to be the correct color. That's as quick of an explanation I could give on how to install and configure this program. In my next video, I'll go through an example and discuss methods for modifying this XML file. This video makes things look really easy. As far as the installation goes, it is easy, but configuring the correct pin to the correct part of the LED and then calling them out gave me a little bit of trouble. It was a lot of trial and error. Overall, I'm happy with the documentation the programmer put in, all of the different boards that you can hook up. Oh, and did I mention that this is free? This is a free program. I do recommend you make a donation to the programmer, though. And you can do that on the RGB Commander website. So let me know how your installation went or if you have any questions in the comments. And stay tuned for more. Stay tuned for more. You damn dirty human. Wow, wow, wow.